Hello and welcome back to another KCC video. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're gonna jump into some tales from tech support. Our first story today comes to us from Federal Ant 9. Bought the wrong software and don't want to admit you made a mistake? Cool, pay five times as much and lose your job. Let's jump right in. This happened over 20 years ago. Conversations from memory may have minor details altered, but the story's the same. I had worked about two years at this point for a MSP, at the time called a systems integrator, and they generously paid for the engineers and techs to obtain industry certifications. I started out as an on-call contractor setting up desktops, and they hired me on full-time after about three months. By the time the malicious compliance occurred, I had worked my way up to junior level engineer, obtained my MCSE, CNA, and was working towards my CNE and Cisco certs. At the time, Novell and Microsoft were neck and neck in server operating system dominance, hence getting both certs. With book study and field experience, I wasn't an expert, but I held my own. One day, I get called into the boss's office to meet with him, the owner, and the salesperson. The owner told me with a gleam in his eye that the company just landed a major, high-profit client, our city's pro basketball team, and they've agreed to give us a small task to prove ourselves. I was to install and configure backup software on their Windows server, important later, and test to ensure it works. The team offered the carrot of not only signing a long-term support contract, but also a recommendation to their business partners and other teams if I was successful. This was definitely within my wheelhouse. I figured one hour tops in and out. I showed up to the arena, checked in with security, and I'm escorted to the business office area. A lady we'll call Karen comes out and introduces herself as the CIO. Karen spent the first 45 minutes of my time there to take me on a grand tour of the business office. I saw the owner's offices, the GM's office, her office, pictures of framed autographed jerseys, the nearly empty trophy case, and the big glass window that overlooks the court. She even said I'm welcome to eat lunch in the staff dining area. She then said she's taking me to the server room. In another circumstance, I would have considered the tour a treat, but three things. First, I had another client to see that day, and this was messing up my schedule. Not a big deal, I can have the office call the client to move the visit back a little. Second, the team hadn't exactly been playing championship caliber basketball, except the last two years prior. Before that, they made the playoffs twice in 15 years, and got their heads kicked in both times. Third, my favorite basketball team is this team's rival. So it's cool, but I'm not over the moon. Then she asked if I was ready to see the server room. We turn a couple of corners and she unlocked the door to a really small office. Boxes stacked in one corner, spare furniture in another. At the back wall sat an old school CRT monitor hooked to an old school KVM switch box on a desk connected to two tower computers sitting side by side on the carpeted floor. Right next to the monitor sat a stack of network switches with a spaghetti of cables that ran haphazardly up the wall and into a removed panel of the fake ceiling. On top of the tower sat a box with the backup software. Karen waved her hand at the setup, pointed to a sheet with some handwriting on it, said I should have everything I need and she'll be in her office if I had any questions. She left me to it, and after I called the home office to reschedule my other client, I started assessing the situation. I quickly saw the first problem. The Netware server was already set up to run backups, but going by the status report date on the screen, backups hadn't been running for months. The software was only an add-on module to backup email folders. Using the credentials on the sheet, I logged into the Windows Server running exchange to handle all the email. I tried to look at different settings, and I quickly realized I only had limited permissions. I logged on to the Novell server and I didn't have enough permissions. I walked back to the CIO's office. So far, Karen's been pretty chill, but suddenly Karen flipped the Karen switch on. Maybe I didn't seem impressed enough with the tour. Two problems. First, I need admin permissions to do the work you need done. Second, why do you need admin permissions? To install and configure the backup software. The software also, why can't you just use the accounts I gave you? because they don't have enough permissions, and the backup soft, my other tech, let's call him Paul, uses those accounts fine to run the backups. Why do you need extra permissions? Picks up the desk phone and dials. Hey Paul, could you come to my office now please? Thanks. Probably because he has backup operator permissions. 
higher permissions are needed to install software. Speaking of which, after Paul knocks on the door and enters, have you had any problems with the daily backups? No, why? OP here says he needs extra permissions to install the backup software. Do you agree? Look side to side. I'm not sure as I just handle the desktop. If Paul can manage backups with those accounts, I don't see why you can't install the software, OP. How did you install the software originally? All this was set up before I started here, and I was brought in to clean all of this up. Is there anyone else who manages the servers? No, it's just me and him. I see. Would you come with me, please? I need to show you something. Why? It's easier to show you than explain. Karen rolls her eyes, gets up from her desk, and motions to Paul to come with. We all go back to the server room. Okay, first, let me ask. My understanding is you want the backup software installed on the Windows server, right? Of course, so it can perform brick-level backups of the email. You guys said you were sending one of your best. How do you not know about backups? That's why I'm asking. You bought an add-on module for the Novel server, showing her where it says on the box, I can't install this on Windows. Snatches the box from my hand. I called the software company myself and ordered it from them directly after I told them the setup here. Are you saying they lied to me and sold me the wrong product or made a mistake? No, I'm not saying that, as I wasn't part of the conversation. I'm only saying this is for Novell, and I can't install this on Windows. So they sold me the wrong software? Can we go to their website or call them? Rolls her eyes. Fine, let's go back to my office. Back at her office, she sat down, went to the website while I stood behind her, then spun around to me with a smirk on her face after a few mouse clicks. See, this is what I bought. It says right here it will back up Microsoft Exchange servers. Well, this doesn't say brick level backups, and it says for novel servers. Can you click where it says Microsoft? Size and clicks. This is pointless. I bought what I bought because it's half the cost. When I called, they said this would also back up my Exchange server. Why would it back up a Windows server but not install on a Windows server? That makes no sense. Pointing to the screen, it says right there, the Windows version performs brick level backups. The Netware version will back up the emails, but the entire database. And it will restore the entire database as one file, but it can't do brick level backups or restores. A server can back up anything as long as it can see it on a network, and it has permissions to it. Here's the bottom line, they told me this would work. I'm paying you to make this work, so make it work. Or tell me you can't make it work, and I'll find someone who can. It'll work, but not like how you think. And if you want to make it work, it will only install on Novell. Can I show you? Sighs and hands me the software box. I still need an admin login. After several more minutes of debate over the admin login, she reluctantly logged me into the Windows server. I put the CD into the Windows server and nothing happened. I brought up the CD in Explorer to show her folders and files, but no executable and no way really to install. She unlocked the Novel console. I inserted the CD, mounted it, and the install auto ran. I didn't look back, but I could feel her eyes burning holes into the back of my head. In about 30 minutes, I installed the software, configured it to back up the Exchange server boxes, as well as the rest of the data on both servers, and performed a successful test backup, all while she hovered over me with her arms crossed. I noticed that backups hadn't been running, and after checking the logs to find the problem, I configured the scheduled service to log in with the backup operator account credentials. Test it again successfully. By the way, your backups haven't been running for about three months. I fixed that for you. The scheduled service doesn't have a login account configured, so I plugged in the backup operator username and password. What do you mean? You saw the status screen when we walked in, and it said successful backup, and you said you needed admin rights. Yes, that was the last successful backup, which was months ago. Switching to the log file on screen, here's the date and time of the last successful backup. Configuring a backup job and installing software are two different tasks that need two different sets of permissions. Karen stomped to the door, opened it, and yelled for Paul. When he arrived, she lit into him so loudly, someone from the cubicles came into the room to see what the problem was. I still feel bad about that because it wasn't Paul's fault. After three hours, I left and immediately called my boss from the car, explaining exactly what happened. Sure enough, Karen had already called. My boss reassigned my other client and asked me to come back. When I got back to the office, the owner, my boss, and I went to the conference room, and we set up a conference call with Karen and the backup software support team. 
they looked up Karen's account and politely explained that according to the notes, they told Karen to buy the Windows version for brick level backups of Exchange email accounts. But Karen balked at the price, so they offered her the Novel version with the caveat that it would perform entire Exchange database backups and user folders only. I wasn't completely right, but right enough. Karen now insisted that they only sold her what they sold her because she threatened to buy their competitor's software. After she demanded a supervisor, the supervisor got on the call and said she needed to buy the correct software. They would make an exception to their no refunds on open software policy and give her a partial credit. Otherwise, she could go ahead and buy the competitor's software and she would get no refund at all. Karen huffed and puffed and tried playing the do you know who I work for card, but they wouldn't budge. She had no other choice. After the software company hung up, Karen asked the owner when he could send me out to finish the job. He muted the phone and asked me if I wanted to go back out there, and I said no. He asked me if I would go if he sent a senior there with me, and I agreed. He then unmuted and told Karen that to make sure there are no issues, he was sending me with a senior engineer, and he made a deal with her. If the senior corrected my work, there would be no charge for service. However, if I was correct, then she would pay for my time today, plus the time for both me and the senior on the second visit. Also, she would need to make sure that we had full administrative access and not hover while we worked. Agree to all conditions or we don't come back. Karen agreed and added in that she would definitely not work with us again, then hung up abruptly. We went back after Karen got the correct software. I installed it without a hitch, even though she had enabled remote desktop on the server to watch me. I also wrote up a job aid for Paul with screenshots to manage backup jobs. The senior saw I knew what I was doing, so to pass the time, he made a list of recommendations for her. Server racks, anti-static mats, UPS, racks for the switches, cable management, adequate ventilation and temperature controls, physically securing the room, disaster recovery plan, etc. He emailed them to Karen and CC'd me, my boss, and the owner. The invoice we sent her charged her for three hours for my first visit, plus the hour at my rate and another hour for the senior at the higher rate. A few months later, my boss told me they got a call back from the team's new CIO. He said after the team restructured the business unit, he took Karen's place and hired additional staff. Paul discovered the recommendation list among a bunch of emails Karen had deleted with a brick level restore of her emails that I set up. The new CIO wanted to know how soon the company could send someone to complete the recommendation list and consult his staff on additional recommendations. Since the new CIO was hiring his own staff, he wouldn't need us for a long-term support contract, but he would definitely call us when he needed any work done they couldn't handle. Ah yes, the Karen managers that think they know best but end up costing the company five times what they should have been paying for a simple service. Come on. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our second story today comes to us from Pilot Avery. Customer repeatedly ignores post fail warning, damages his computer, doesn't trust the brand of drive, then asks for a discount on rock bottom pricing. Let's jump right in. I provide on-demand all-inclusive IT and tech support for a few local companies. This ranges from network support and troubleshooting, basic backend web dev, I outsource most, appliance troubleshooting and repair, computer motherboard repair, basically all inclusive. I was an EE designing and manufacturing prototype PCBs before moving to computers. I also repair motherboards and phone boards, hard drives and flash drives, appliances, car electronics, radios, etc. For individuals who happen to find me on Google, I work from my house. I got a call from a customer who complained that his 16-month-old HP Envy kept blue screening over and over and had a fan error and ran very slowly. So when you power on the computer, you get a fan error? Yes, it says fan error. The system has detected that the fan is not functional. Operating the computer can cause potential damage to your computer. Are you sure you want to continue? And then it says press F1 to continue. Oh, so that's an easy fix. Fans for that computer are about $20, and I charge another $35 on top of it for the install. Bring it by, and first I will make sure that is actually the issue, and then I will order it tonight. Oh, I really need to use it. It has another problem. It keeps blue screening over and over, and if it blue screens and I reboot, it instantly blue screens again. Want me to show you the error? 
no, you should not be powering on your computer. You can actually break it that way. The warning is telling you that the cooling fan isn't working because if it overheats, it will break and nobody will be able to fix it. Note, I worded it this way to simplify it so he would understand. But it was working before. I will check to see if it has been damaged by overheating. Next time, don't ignore messages like that. Well, I was doing that for a few weeks and it was working fine before, but now it won't even boot up. It just says it's booting forever and never finishes. Well, first, I will have to fix the fan in order to properly diagnose it after. That will be $55 for the fan and let's see what else it needs from there. What was happening is that after 5 minutes of thermal throttling, it would eventually crash and reboot. Without giving time to cool off, he would try and use it again immediately, rinse and repeat. But we're just getting to the fun part. After the fan arrived and I repasted it, installed the fan and tightened some very loose hinges, booted, Windows would not load from the drive properly. Most of you know what this means. The Windows install may be corrupt or the drive is damaged, so I pull all the files off the NVMe drive using an enclosure bridge and it takes forever. I mean 1 kilobit per second and 100% active time. Check the drive and it had tons of CRC errors, at least 70 counts of over temp threshold and it had thousands of reallocated sectors. AKA the drive was effing fried to death. It took me 40 hours to even image the drive and another 10 hours of test disk operation to then extract his files from the drive, most of them anyway along with a partial directory tree. Hello, I figured out why Windows did not boot even though it's booted before. Your SSD is damaged due to severe overheating. You can replace them for about $75 and then I would charge another $35 to install it and install Windows and copy your user files back. I have a drive here in stock. It's an SK Hynix Gold P31. It performs roughly the same as the Intel H10 that is in your computer but is much cheaper and not prone to overheating like the Intel one. I also have an ADATA drive which I could use and would only cost $30 and it's lightly used. Used? Can you just get another Intel one? I want to get a good quality drive. Mine was an SSD. Can you make sure it's an SSD? The SK Hynix is a well-known brand. The performance is about as good and the reliability is better in most tests. Any NVMe compatible drive is going to be an SSD. They do not make NVMe hard drives. They're not small enough. I've not heard of SK Hynix. Are you sure they're good? What is the warranty? They make the SSDs found in many smartphones and they supply SSDs to Acer, HP, Lenovo and other companies. You've probably never heard of them because they do not sell in stores, but mostly to other companies in bulk. I have one in my own laptop too, for what it's worth. This Intel H10 drive that was in it is a QLC flash, so they also wear out faster than the SK Hynix TLC. QLC means that each little cell that holds data has to hold a little more data, so every time you write a file, it has to do extra wear. I know, I know, this is very, very dumbed down, but this is about how it went because this customer wanted an answer he couldn't understand. But QLC is cheaper than TLC, except Intel. The 512 gig Intel drive is $140, while SK Hynix is $75. If you would like me to order an exact replacement, I can order one now and it will be here in 3 days. Or I can charge you $75 and give you the SK Hynix now, as that's what I keep stocked. Oh, that's expensive, can you not get it cheaper? I know Intel drives are overpriced in my opinion and not very good quality, but it's your decision. If you want to, if I put another Intel drive in it, I will probably remove the metal cover over the drive because it traps in the heat and does not let the fan recirculate the air in there. Okay bro, fine, I trust you, but if it breaks, I will blame you. I don't like customers like this who blame you for everything that happens after, but it's part of the job. Don't worry, they have a 5 year warranty, the same as most drives like this. Alrighty, so the total here is going to be $75 for the drive, $21 for the fan, $35 for the fan replacement, and $35 for the hard drive replacement, and Windows installation and file transfer. That makes your total $166 for everything. It'll be ready tonight in a few hours or you can pick it up tomorrow. Oh come on man, the computer is only a year old. Can't you give me a break? I came to you without any referral or anything. I'm sorry, my prices are as low as they can be and I already didn't charge you for data recovery as I hadn't even mentioned the possibility. So I already gave you a discount. Any other shop would have charged at least $200 just to swap your hard drive and install Windows alone, even without the fan. 
so I think my prices are more than fair. Okay, fine bro, thanks. This customer's laptop was dinged up, a huge dent in the back, warped screen, looked like it was sat on. Why do all the worst customers always abuse the crap out of their computers? Yeah, OP, I probably would have charged him more in the first place because you know he's coming back with every little thing that goes wrong with that computer. Not somebody I'd want to deal with. I give you a kudos for your patience. Check out both OPs linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.